Hey guys, John here. Today's video, we're gonna be making a patch called Medieval Times. Now, this one started off as creating strings using pulse waves, and then it started off a little bit banjo-y, and then it became a little bit more medieval, and then I, was, I decided to sneak in the banjo just a little bit towards the end there. But anyway, it sounds a little something like this. And if we dropped it down an octave. Anyway, I think you get the idea there. So before we start diving into this, we do have this fifth, which is kind of cool. Kind of just adds to that tonality a little bit there. Even if we play a little bit higher up here. And just sneaking that in there gives it a nice little texture. Okay, so let's start diving into this. The main things that we need to really think about is that this is all based upon the pulse wave. So we have one, two, and three, and they're all different pulse widths, with, which actually do not change. So if we went to our second pigments instance, and let's go to a new preset, and we're back into our analog engine. So the first one is a pulse wave, and the width is gonna be pretty narrow at 0.948. So pulse wave, 0.948, so something, where are we, 0.9? Four eight. So very nasally. Okay. Now this one's gonna be down one octave, so let's bring this guy down. Okay, cool. So the next one is gonna be also a pulse wave, but this width is gonna be 0 0.806 all the way in the mix. Okay, and the third one is gonna be the width of 0.644. And then, funny enough, this whole thing didn't happen until the end of this patch, but we can just do it now at the beginning since we're here and we already know what we're gonna do. So the volume's all the way down, but it's gonna be controlled by macro two by one. So macro two, dragging up this here, and then go all the way to the top, and this is going to be fifth, so five TH. And this guy is gonna be up 19 semitones, so an octave plus a seventh, or op octave plus a fifth, which 12 plus seven, you know what I'm saying. So 19 semitones here. So basically a fifth plus an octave. Okay, let's leave that down for now. And let's kind of start diving into this guy. So as you look here, we have all our pulse widths pretty much down. This one is up an octave, which I, or uh, 19, which we just did. Okay, that's cool. So if we look here, we can see this wiggling here on the fine. So this fine is getting modulated by LFO1 at 0 0.08. So let's go ahead and drag and drop that here. So LFO1, drag and drop 0 0.08. So a small amount. Now it's going a little bit too slow. And if we look at this guy here, this, this LFO, our rate is gonna be 4.85 Hertz and it's gonna be on poly keyboard. So 4.8, something like this here. So we have that kind of modulation going on there. So that they look like they're moving the same speed there. Okay. And yeah, notes engine two and the utility engine, we'll get to that in just a moment, but we do need to talk about the uh, the filters. Okay, so the first one is gonna be the multi-mode bandpass 12. So we kind of want to thin this thing out because we don't really want that much low end there. So low pass here, let's change this to a bandpass 12, which I believe we did, yep, 12. And the keyboard tracking is all the way up. Now our cutoff is manually at 908. And then our resonance is gonna be at 0 0.088. And there we go. Already kind of a cool sounding patch there. Okay, so we have that, and then our filter routing is filter one's going to filter two, and then we're gonna change this here, which we're gonna see this in just a moment because we're gonna use the utility engine for that guy. Okay, so now what we can do is we can actually look at the main envelope for this guy. So our attack is gonna be default at one, decay is gonna be 975. So one and then 975, which is 
pretty close to, <laughs> to one, obviously. And then our sustain all the way down. If we check here, we have no sustain. And then our release is going to be 769 milliseconds. So we're kind of having a kind of a stringy vibe, kind of a more ringing out string. You can always tighten the release and the decay up if you don't like that as much. Okay. So we have that done here. Now the next thing, I guess we could just load this up next. Yeah, okay. What we can do next here is for our patch we're working on, let's turn this guy on and we're gonna be on the multi-mode and this is low pass 24, which is gonna be our default. Now, if we look at our cutoff, this is gonna be at 2,986, so almost 3K. So bring the sound just under 3K like that here. That's going to be fine. And then our resonance is going to be at 0 0.264, 0 0.264. Okay. We have that here. Kaboom, almost there. There we go. Okay, so now this guy, no keyboard tracking. So you might ask yourselves, what's the purpose of this guy? So if we go to our utility engine, we see we have analog noise for our noise. So let's turn this on and let's scroll a couple times until we see the analog noise. Now this guy is going all the way to filter two. So let's turn this all the way to filter two, which is gonna be this guy, which is why we're setting this up. Now, if we look at our volume, this is gonna be modulated by envelope three. So all the way down at envelope three at 0.67. So all the way down envelope three, let's drag and drop this here at 0 0.67, something like that. That's basically what we're adding there. Okay, so that's gonna be kind of a, a transient to kind of simulate the finger or the like some type of pick on a string to kind of really drive that point home there. Next up, we're gonna be modulating this filter as well. So this filter is gonna be modulated by envelope two at 0.25. So envelope two, drag and drop this here at 0.25, which is default. So now before we move on, let's look at these envelopes and make sure our values are the same. So envelope two, we have one which is default, DK 500 default, sustain all the way down, and we see that as well. And then our release here is going to be at 731 because as we release, that quick snapback we don't really want. And once we start adding the effects, the uh, the levels and all that, all the levels and everything will kind of just balance out a little bit more. So hang on for that one if that's what you're thinking. So envelope three, we have one which is default, 500 milliseconds default, sustain zero default, release 100 default, and they all look the same curve. Okay, looks like we're good here, except our main amplitude negative four. We should change that a little bit here. Well, that is default. How about that? I thought it was two. Okay, so now we're kind of ready to dive into our effects here. So what's going on in our effects? So we have an EQ, which we're cutting off a little bit of that low end there. So let's go ahead and add this guy and then our EQ, whoops, not filter, our EQ. Maybe a little bit of that we can kind of remove. Small move there, nothing too crazy. Next, we have a delay. So this one's gonna be kind of interesting because this is macro three. We have our macros on delay and then we have reverb, which is kind of interesting. So let's add a delay for this second guy here. Let's bring this all the way down and then macro three, drag and drop this guy here. And our value is gonna be 0.38 for our depth. So we can bring this up 0.38. Let's bring this all the way up like that. And we're gonna label this as delay, okay? Kind of interesting there. So our time is gonna be one over 16. So time one over 16 like that. And then we're gonna just do our full cutting here. So let's go ahead and do that. So up on the high pass and then down on the low pass. Now this delay is more so meant to kind of just open up the sound a little bit more, not necessarily like a delay, 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 delay kind of thing, but just to make it kind of almost simulate like you're in a bigger room and plus with a reverb on top of that, it's gonna really bring that home. Gonna be kind of interesting there. So. 
Before we move on with some of our other things here, we should go ahead and add this tone and this fifth. We did the fifth, so we should add the tone, which is technically still going to be a cutoff, which you'll see here in just a second. So our first one <laughs> is gonna be, you're looking at this FXA mod one, like what the heck is this? If we go to our effects, it's gonna be basically this cutoff here. Because as much as I wanted to do a tonality here, I didn't really wanna change the bandpass of kind of how we're carving the sound. And then the second filter is kind of just also taking that signal, but also kind of working with that noise there. And I kind of wanted to leave those alone and then use the third filter after that to kind of just change the tone a little bit. So if we go to our effects here on our <laughs> on our effects, click here and then we can add a uh, add another multi-filter. And this is kind of fine up here in the middle. I believe that's what I did as well. 921, okay, that's a little bit off like that, whatever. Something like that. Anyway, the whole point is grabbing our first macro, dragging and dropping this here. And then we did a depth of, let's see, where are we? 0 0.50, so we can bring this up to 0 0.50. So here we can kind of control how much of that we want. And tone, and it's supposed to be kind of just a smooth thing. It's not really supposed to be like, oh, this is the character of this filter. It's just kind of just meant to filter stuff out. Nothing too special. So we have that, so we did our delay and then, okay, boom. Now we need to do a reverb and for this one, I wanna do this on a send. So let's select our post effects because we want this all this processing to be then sent to the reverb. Now our reverb, if you look at this guy, is gonna be a little bit different than default here. So if you look at this guy, the pre-delay is going to be, what does it say, 18? Yeah, 18 milliseconds. So I believe it's two down from 20 there. And then our size is gonna be a little bigger, one, three, four, bring this to one, three, four. We want a bigger room for this guy. And then our decay, we're bringing this down to 0.364. So decay 0.364, or something like that. And then do a little bit of our cutting there, cutting our lows and highs, which is maybe a little bit more of that. And then bring up our send here. Okay, so we have this guy kind of set up. Now let's put this dude on a uh, on a macro. So macro four, we can drag and drop this to our send and bring this down and kind of let's see where we're at. Maybe something up like this. I kind of like giving a little bit more than you need just in case if you want to do something crazy with reverb. So reverb on this guy and then let's bring this up here. Yeah, kind of interesting sound there. We can always bring down our delays if that's too much or our reverb. Drop our sound an octave. And maybe that maybe that noise is a little bit much now that I'm kind of listening to it. So maybe we can bring this down a little bit. You could also, if we're doing kind of a noise attack thing, maybe that decays a little bit too long so we can just bring in the curve a little bit as opposed to the actual timing. might kind of make things a little bit nicer there. Okay, so I believe we have pretty much everything covered except for the fifth that we didn't really talk about this too much. So like I said, we have this here on the third oscillator, which is gonna be up in 19 semitones. So we have an octave plus a fifth, and it kind of just adds to the tonality of this type of sound. So as we bring this in here, we hear that kind of like high end note that kind of sneaks in there. Right, so all the way to the top is pretty excessive. That's why we kind of want to hear what we're doing and then maybe tuck that guy in just a little bit. And kind of play it like that then. And back to our regular octave here. Yeah, kind of an interesting one. So like I said, the main process to kind of think about is using these pulse waves at different widths and kind of just making the, 
I guess the string type of amp or the string type of <laughs> envelope VCA to kind of simulate the quick transient and then a quick fade out and maybe a little bit of a release if you need to. And then kind of using those in conjunction and seeing how that changes the sound. Now, once you have everything built, you can then go around and kind of change the width and see how that changes the sound there. Yeah, so that's kind of the whole process there. So definitely try to make a patch with these pulse waves at different pulse widths and then making an envelope that would emulate a string and then see where you kind of go from there. So yeah, I believe we covered everything for this patch here, which, oh, actually one last thing, the amp mod. So this is kind of important, I think, for a patch like this because every time we hit a string, it's not always gonna be the same uh, same velocity. So maybe for this knob here, maybe you just wanna turn this up all the way to one. So if we play a soft note, or a harder note, kind of gives you a little bit more dynamics there. Yeah, might be a little bit uh, more realistic, I guess, in that sense. But yeah, so that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.